Looks like we're live. <laughs> hey, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. So we can go ahead and get started, Fabio. So I want to thank you so much for joining Service Loop and you know talking about your current um, strategies with new talent, retaining new talent, as well as obtaining new talent. Um, Fabio, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself, your role at Tetra Pak, and kind of um, what Tetra Pak is. Absolutely, absolutely. So as you as you can see on the screen, I'm Fabio Raffone, and I and I work for Tetra Pak. Many of you might know what Tetra Pak is. Tetra Pak is a food system supplier for you know, uh, food. Uh, so we provide equipment for processing, for packaging. We provide the packaging material. In US, we are famous for, you know, common inflame as, as the juice box. So the carton multi-layer package, uh, but we do much more. We do machinery for ice cream and much more. I've been in this company for 15 plus years in different countries, uh, US, Brazil, Italy. I'm originally Italian. And prior to this, I was employed by, by Nestle. Thank you, Fabio, for sharing that. Um, with that extensive background, especially in different countries, you know, I'm curious, how are you uh, attracting new, new talent in field service? And kind of what is Tetra Pak that doing that's different uh, to get younger technicians? Okay, so uh, we are a global company. We are present in every single country, basically. Uh, so it might be very much country specific, right? So, and then we are very well known in, uh, as a brand in many countries. Now I'm based in US, if I take US as an example, the brand is probably less well known than in many other countries. Although for us, it's very important to the word of mouth because normally whoever working for us is uh, very engaged and very happy and it can attract other people with the same values we we are very much into the sustainability we are very much into protecting uh, you know food people and planet our motto is protect what's good so we do we do a lot of good things and when people get to know our story they are interested to to work with us we have a referral program with a, a monetary incentive that is uh, uh, working pretty well as well to attract more people and then we partner with the university i can share one example we, with one of our customers, we are partnering, partnering with university, having students at customer sites and exploring what does it mean working for one of our customers or working for us as a supplier. So a B2C like our customer or a B2B like our company. And then in this, in this way, the students have more opportunities. They see the full picture. If they want to be more local in one specific site, it's better probably to be with the customer and those specific jobs. If they want to be to travel uh, and to be more exposed to an international uh, you know, environment and go from customer to customer every week to service or to support our equipment, it is probably more likely to be, uh, you know, more our company. So that's that's just to mention one. Then you mentioned a little bit younger generation. So if, if you don't mind, I can link it a little bit to that as well. Uh, when it comes to younger generations, it, uh, we have a specific program that is called Future Talent. Okay, so in every every year globally and in specific countries, we launch this specific, this uh, Future Talent program that is uh, targeted to people from university that are just graduating and they can join our company and be exposed for 18 months in this program. And in this program, they will not only learn what they are going to do in their specific team, but they are exposed to many other uh, teams or organization uh, in, within the company. So they know inside out much more about the company. And then after the 18 months program, they start doing the job we have hired them for. Wow, it sounds like a lot of different um, methods and tools that you guys are utilizing. Are you seeing any struggles still now in 2024 with retaining or obtaining new talent, um, even with those tools that you're utilizing right now? So attracting new talents is what I just mentioned in some examples, but we have more. The focus then is in retaining the talents, right? That's very that's very important. We want people to, to be happy, to be engaged, to stay with us with a longer period of time, 
two minutes ago I was celebrating 35 years anniversary of a colleague of mine, but we have example of 40 plus years in Tetra Park, right? An average uh, years in Tetra Park is very high. And many people start thinking that it's going to be only a few years and then all of a sudden it's more than 30. That's a very good signal, right? But it requires a lot of uh, focus. So I think it starts everything from building trust, right? Mutual trust and respect. I personally respect very much the job that our service delivery engineers are doing day in and day out. Uh, and it's very important to understand and recognize the efforts and what everybody's doing and celebrate the successes, right? So that's, that's, uh, that's just one example. I think it's important, even small things can make the difference if you have the consistency to do it every time, right? Even celebrating, as I just mentioned, anniversaries. Yes. Working anniversaries. It's extremely important. So I would suggest everybody to think about it. And then there was a, a coach of mine that I was so uh, glad to have in the past that was asking me, Fabio, what is motivating everybody? Right. Yeah, yeah. And then I was reflecting, normally you say money or other stuff like this, right? And money can be very much a demotivating factor. But, you know, if you pay, if your pay is fair within the market, uh, then it's difficult to have it as a motivating factor uh, as money. But what is motivating everybody is to be part of a winning team. Yeah, okay? yeah. So if you think about that, we as a managers, we just need to make sure that everybody feel part of the journey. And also we need to define what winning means, right? And then in the end to celebrate, and this is back to what I was saying before, celebrate is very important, right? Celebrate the success because that person has achieved what you have defined as a winning and they felt part of the journey. Yes, so celebrating those small wins along the way and making sure everybody feels included. Do you, is that part of Tetra Packs, um, when you guys do have new talent come in, um, retaining that talent, is that part of one of your methods? Is celebrating the small wins along the way, or what other methods do you, do you implement? No, it's it's essential, right? To 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 be there, uh, to celebrate, but also to ask for opinion. Okay, so my my personal KPI that I share with my team, just to let everybody understand, uh, it, it is when people are coming to me either with new ideas or they are even challenging or having different ideas than what, what we suggested, right, from a management point of view. So if everybody's coming, having different opinion, that's very much appreciated. And I always say, if you convince me that is better, I will be super glad to change my idea, right? If you don't convince me in the end, I need to take the decision, we stick with it, but you get credit to try. Right. So if everybody has a voice, if you have an open door policy, if you are very accessible, I think over time, then engagement and trust is built and then you can build much, much bigger things. Yes, absolutely. I agree. I think that's something that um, from a leadership standpoint that all companies should be implementing. So it's nice to see that Petro Pack is already doing that. Um, I think that's huge when you're trying to continue to uh, retain the talent that you have existing. And like you said, you guys are having people that are staying on thinking, you know, five years and they're there 30 years. That's that's very big. And it shows, you know, Tetra Pak is, is doing it the right way. Um, as far as, you know, motivation, what does that look like to you? How would you define motivation when it comes from uh, whether it's personal or professional? How are you motivating your team? So, you know, we, we spend a lot of time at work in our life, right? So, uh, and, and you have two possible scenarios. You wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I need to go to work. Or you can wake up in the morning and, uh, and, and be, you know, be focused on what you need to do, right? Ideally, you need to be excited about what you need to do. But, you know, it's, it's uh, sometimes enough that you are focused on what you need to do, right? right so right. it's important to be meaningful. And there is, you know, that, uh, that sentence uh, that you can find in many books, it was also in Simon Sinek's book, uh, you know, when you ask somebody that is uh, building a wall, uh, how is your job, and they say, it's very tiring, uh, I'm, I'm putting these bricks, it's, uh, you know, I'm working very hard, it, 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 I, I don't like it. And then he asks to another worker and he's saying, I'm building a cathedral. Right. So, so when you have a little bit of an overall ambition of helicopter view or a vision of what you are doing for good, 
then uh, then it is uh, it is much better and then you're motivating and that's motivating myself and it's motivating the team so knowing that we want to protect food to protect planet to protect people to protect what's good to make sure that we have food safe and accessible everywhere that's that's motivating me in uh, in working hard every day yes i think that's a beautiful mission that you guys have put together and it gives you a clear vision of um, where to direct your leadership and even some of your personal values, right? And tying those two together. So what about talent retention or obtaining new talent is close to your heart? What, what about that, you know, journey is close to your heart? Yeah, I, I think it should be close to every manager heart, right? I, ideally, I would be very happy if somebody that is in my team becomes my boss in the future. Okay, and I'm very happy and I celebrate with somebody that is my in my team reporting to me because my peer afterwards, right? So that, that's, and every time we have a yearly discussion or even the mid-year discussion or whatever, I always ask my team, what do you want to do as the next career opportunity, right? Many times we focus too much on the current development, but how can I help you developing yourself for your next career opportunity? Right. And, and this is normally very much appreciated because we don't discuss much about this. And we can help that person to be more ready for the next career opportunity. We cannot promise that one, of course, but it's part of our job to help them to be more ready, to be more exposed, to expand their network, to be more visible so that then they can take the next career opportunity. Absolutely. So just continuing that growth. And I think um, that's pivotal. A lot of companies don't have that right now. I think a lot of people within my network were talking about um, creating that space where it's not just the next step, but also the longevity of being with that company or in general, your personal and professional development. So, you know, given the landscape, there's a lot of massive layoffs right now. Um, does Tetra Pak have any current open roles in field service? We do. We do. And of course, I can use this platform to encourage to, to apply. So we publish everything on our uh, on our site. So please go and check vacancies per country and per role. So we are launching the Future Talent program as we speak in many countries. So if you are interested in the Future Talent, please apply. And it's not only for technical roles, it's also for leadership roles future leadership role, so feel free to check and apply. And of course, we have many other open vacancies at any time. So yeah, absolutely. We, we have vacancies every, every, every month. Absolutely, thank you for sharing that, Fabio. Is there anything that you would like to share or a last tip with you know, other field service leaders that are joining us today as far as like drawing in new talent and or retaining the talent that they currently have. Any last last words? I, I was in in a, in a conference last last year and there was somebody saying you need to hire with the three C's. Okay, and then I said, what, what, what's that? You need yeah. to hire for character, chemistry, and then competence. Okay, in this order. Okay. okay. Sometimes we only work, we look at competence, but you know, the character and the chemistry, it means you need to hire somebody that is matching the company values, right? You right. need to have a huge diversity, but in that, somebody needs to fit in the company values, right? Somebody is more keen to work for startups, somebody is more keen to work for uh, a big corporation, but you need to match the values. If you start with, you know, character, then chemistry, and then competence, then it's a good start in order to have more retention afterwards. Absolutely, I love that. Hopefully some people write that down, those three C's. <laughs> well, Fabio, it's been absolutely a pleasure to have you on. I think, you know, with your experience and it's what Tetra Pak is doing, hopefully a lot of other full service leaders um, can take these notes and utilize it, you know, to draw in new talent as well as retain the talent that they currently have. Again, thank you so much for joining Service Loop, and um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.